Finally, it is time to create our website within the local server so we can start to begin creating our WordPress website. If your local server isn't open yet, do so now. Mine here from the taskbar, I'll launch it and this will open the local server that we had installed and set up in lesson two. Now here in lesson three, let's have a look at what's going on. If this is your first time in local, you shouldn't see anything here. This should be very, 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 very empty for you. What you see here in my case are websites, WordPress websites that I have created within the local server. Let's create the one that we will be working with in this tutorial. You see the big plus here at the bottom? That is the queue for your local site. Click on that and we begin. I'll call this WordPress 101. This is the name that I'm giving my website. For example, when I created Websites for Beginners, I would call that Websites for Beginners. If you want to call it Auntie Tilly's Marmalade, you're going to call it Auntie Tilly's Marmalade. It depends on what your website is all about. Whenever you see this option, Advanced Options, go blind. Don't see it at all. Just focus on the easy stuff. This is why Local is such an awesome app for you to practice with as a beginner. Next button, Continue. And you're going to select Preferred. Custom means you're going to set everything up by yourself. Ooh, no, click preferred and then click on continue. Righty, what's going on here? Well, first you have to give it a username. I will call my WordPress username JP. And for my password, let's call it websites for beginners underscore one, two, three, four, exclamation mark. Well, I remember that. And you can just check here websites for beginners underscore one, two, three, four, exclamation mark. And Karen, if I forget, you have to remind me. Then over here, you're going to put in the email which you want this account to be associated to. This will also act as the username when you log in. You'll see that very soon. Right, there we're ready. We click Add Site and all the wheels and cogs and wrenches and spanners are starting to work there. And then it's going to ask you for permission to go ahead and install it on your computer. As I'm on Windows, it's going to pop up this Windows command processor request. I'm going to say yes, you're going to say yes, and everyone is going to say yes. And look at this, I'm not even cutting out any time. Within a few seconds from now, I think less than a minute, WordPress has been set up and your site is ready to go. Boom, 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 and here we are. Good, so I call this site WordPress 101. That's the name of my site up here. And now you will see, I scroll down here, it also appears over here. Notice the green little dot next to it. This is very important to understand. Just because you've opened the local server doesn't mean you can access your local website yet. You actually have to start the website and when you're done, you can stop it. You will notice there is this red button here, stop all. And then also for this WordPress 101, there is a stop site up there. Click on it and it will stop the site. And now you cannot access it. You cannot go into WordPress. You cannot make your website. If you want to do that, you simply click here on start site and starting up the engines and you're ready to go. There's a lot of stuff over here. Maybe we'll look at a few of them in the future. And one of them we will look at very, very soon. But for now, I want you to go to these two buttons, open site and admin. The difference between these two is that this one, open site, will take you to your website. Imagine you are a visitor, you type in a website address, and you see that site, that is what you're going to see. This one is going to take you into WordPress, where you will be creating that site. So you've just created your first WordPress site, have you? How does it look? Click on open site and let's see how it looks. I am running my default setting for my browser is Microsoft Edge. You can use Chrome, Firefox. These are the guys that are all trusted. Anything that runs on Chromium also works very well. So just check out what works for you. I recommend you go with Chrome. This is your site. This is the website you've just created. Of course, you don't want any of this. And what we will do is we will go into WordPress and we will change this to the site and the glorious website you want it to be. But what I want you to take note of is your website address. You actually have an address here. See here at the top, 
This one is called wordpress-101.local forward slash. You are used to this. This is a website address and this is your website's name, wordpress-101 and the extension .local, which is your computer. That's how you're going to see this. Close this and let's go back to local. This time, click on admin. Now, many different things are going to happen. First of all, it's going to ask you to log in. You can use your username or the email address. Do you remember my username? Of course, JP. I did it there for everyone to see. And the password, W4B underscore 1234, exclamation mark. View it. And there we go. We can log in. And Ooh, very different, right? You can save the password if you want to. And this is WordPress. We will deep dive into what's going on here a lot. But you can see, if I minimize this browser, the difference between these two buttons. This one takes you to how your website will look for a visitor. And admin takes you right inside WordPress. And this is a lovable interface, which is going to infuriate you at times but you're going to get the hang of it very, very soon. You are now locked into WordPress. How do you know that? If you look here in the top corner, you see this bar. In the top on the right, it says, Howdy, JP, and there's my name. This recognizes me as the person in charge of this website, which is the administrator. Whoever creates this website first gets all the power over this website, and this person is called the administrator. In your case, it will be you. You can click on log out, and this is going to log you out and take you back to this login screen. And in the future, if you want to log in again, simply type in your username address. Let's do it. The password. Login. And there you go. You're back in there. Let's log out one more time. Close it. And I want to show you a neat little feature within local. To click on admin, type in your username, type in your password, and you're probably going to type it wrong. It's going to give you error reading. You're going to type it again. This is quite a lengthy process, but it's normal if you are working with a host. But we are working on a local server. Isn't there a way that this can happen quicker? And the answer is pity. Yes, there is. Close here again. Within local, when your website is running, you will see there is an option here called One Click Admin. Currently, it is disabled. If you select the drop down, it will give me JP, which is me as an administrator. By selecting this, in the future, when I click on admin, local is going to log me in automatically. It remembers all my details. It's a local server. It trusts me, the fact that I set it up. So it's not going to ask me for my password and my username. That's great. It just speeds up the workflow. So remember, this is a great tip for you. You don't have to log in every time when you access your WordPress website from local. Test it. Go up here to admin and whoop, takes me right directly into WordPress and I can start begin building my site. When you are done working on your WordPress website, all you need to do because it's on a local server is simply close your browser. And then from here in your local server, which is local, you just click on stop site. You will see it will close it and you can close the app and you're done. In the next lesson, we are going to look at the back end, that administration area of WordPress we had just seen. We're going to look a little bit at the sidebar and the toolbar and what's going on in the back end.